Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Raw Talks podcast. Today, live from the farm with my two ball, bald <laughs> glasses. Two, I have two guys, bald guys with gla round glasses next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, today we are talking about the art of self-trust. Um, we are... Um, meeting a lot of people lately that is struggling a little bit with the fact that they always look for external advice before making a decision and um, coming to the, the realization that it's, uh, I can't make decisions based on other people's opinion. And they also <laughs> mentioned that people aren't really having good advice. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's not a it's not a great solution. So, what is the solution? Would you say, instead of asking for internal advice or external advice? Well, I think you hinted at it, Sarah. Um, My Freudian slip. With that slip, yeah, you know the the internal versus the external. Yeah. If we if you don't trust your own internal instincts and your own internal intuition, then that kind of causes you to seek externally for validation and for advice and for pretty much everything in your life. So you kind of have to turn your, your, your whole world so that you're looking inward for that guidance and that advice and the answers to those questions. It's definitely easier said than done, which I think is probably where we'll carry this conversation forward with. But uh, yeah, that's kind of how it's, the, the, the eventual goal would be to have that internal wisdom. Yeah, and the problem that comes up is when it turns into a loop that you are unable to to make your own decisions, that you always have to look for the external advice. And when, so what what we see also is that that it's like uh, even though you get advice from the outside, you you are still the one that needs to make the decision, and it doesn't really matter if people give you the advice because it's still your decision. So it doesn't really. It's just a cycle that just keeps on, you just keep on asking and you keep on talking about something. And it's, for many people, it can be even more um, ungrounding or stressful to keep asking other people for advice because some might people actually have something great to say and someone has a completely other opinion and people, you know, give advice based out of their own experiences and fears and that can turn into a big hot mess of people's fears and opinions yeah absolutely well, my, my personal journey with this was a lack of self-regulation mm. unable to find clarity in situations so it wasn't so much about finding the right answers, right? Like I was asking everyone else and I thought it was because I wasn't trusting my own voice, but I wasn't able to regulate my own emotions and the stress I was feeling. So sometimes I felt very good with some advices that I got, but they weren't good advices, but the person was feeling very comfortable and safe in themselves, which made me feel safe when I got the advice. But the advice itself wasn't always the best not that it was a bad advice, but it was advice suitable for this person and not necessarily for me or for what resonates with the circumstances in my life. So I think a lot of it comes down to really your ability to self-regulate, which essentially is manage stress on your own without having anyone else that soothes you and calms you down when you're feeling anxious, upset, or worried, or uh, afraid of something that you're able to regulate your own emotional state because a lot of times when we ask for well that was my case but i've seen it in clients too when people ask for opinions of other people it's not really the opinion that they're interested in they're unable to solve something within and then you outsource that request to to quell that inner stress because that's how we prime to do many times. We talk about our problems until now I feel so much better. Yeah. So I would like to deep dive a little bit into the, like the fact, I mean, it's not bad to take advice from other people. It's, I mean, we, if um, we strongly believe that we should not be, you know, alone and, you know, like, uh, the saying, I'm not an island, a person is not an island. 
we're supposed to have people around us and talk about things that, you know, current events and things like that. But what we are talking about is people who constantly ask for other people's opinions and advice because they feel unsure of making the decisions themselves. So I would like to highlight, because it's a bit problematic to give that power away, because the opinion is, as, as Simba briefly touched upon, is that the opinion is from another person, from that person's life, from that purpose, person's perspective, from that purpose, person's <laughs> level of grounding and, and purpose and, and life dream and life goal and values and all of that. And it rarely has anything to do with ourselves and what's best for us and connecting that to, to our company name, like living with the spirit. That's exactly what it is. Like finding your own voice so you can fulfill your purpose or dream or quest or what it is that you are here to do. But if you constantly start to navigate based on someone else's opinion or advice, then you're not following your own spirit. And sometimes we need to go down different, you know, uh, uh, roads to find out that it wasn't the right one. So we are very afraid of making mistakes, but mistakes is, is, is part of life. So giving that, giving the choice or the, the, the decision-making away is, you know, straying away from our own path a little bit. So like, I, I wanted to highlight the, the fact that we're, yeah, we're not supposed to stray away from, we're supposed to make some mistakes. <laughs> Any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was explaining this to uh, someone just a couple of days ago that, um, you know, our, our bodies vibrate at a circuit frequency. And um, when whatever frequency our body vibrates at, we attract like frequencies. It's kind of like this theory of resonance. And so let's, let's say your five closest friends resonate the same way you do. So when you go and ask them for, for an opinion, you're likely to get something back that's on that same wavelength. And if you're looking for a solution to a problem that's outside of that wavelength, then you, you might need to expand your circle a little bit. You know, like it's, so sometimes it's okay to get advice. And, and, and the way that we often get advice is that we go to a frequency that's a little bit higher. And so we go to our teachers, we go to our mentors, we go to places where we have a trusted um, you know, a source of inspiration, but we don't ever go to those mentors and teachers with a direct, like, what should I do about X, Y, Z next week? Because those are questions that they don't really want to answer, nor should they. But if we look at the deeper spiritual aspect of something, we can ask like, what blockages are, are, am I, am I having that are keeping me from experiencing my truth? Like that's something we could go with and get an, an advice for. And so I think that a lot of times when people are asking for an advice, like, what should I do about my job? That's not the question that they're really asking. But the question they're really asking is, how can I speak my truth? They're just not able to really articulate that and understand the deeper spiritual meaning of it. So there, there's lots of layers of comprehension and understanding what is it that the person is seeking and where is that coming from? Love it. Thank you. Simba? Yeah. Safety, you know, that's the word that usually comes up as well. There is some lack of safety, you know, kind of comes back to what I was starting to say about the self-regulation. And I really, yeah, I really resonate with what you say as well, Mark. It has to do with the frequency, but we're kind of looking for something that's safe, you know. That's how we're primed as a species to look for something that feels safe or familiar or comfortable or that... It gives me a sense of I'm embraced, I'm whole, I'm happy, I'm love, and this will be a good decision. And I think a lot of it comes down to shame as well, right? We're afraid of making mistakes and we're afraid of people seeing us making mistakes, right? But if you ask someone else, it's kind of like you're sharing that, you're sharing that position, you're sharing that value, you're sharing that opinion with someone else because you just didn't do it, right? Why didn't you ask me? Why, how could you ever think about doing this this way, right? So I think shame is a big component too that 
there's a lack of uh, inner trust. If you're going to do something differently from everyone else, like Mark was saying, if everyone else in your community has the same frequency and you want to go somewhere, you need to raise that frequency, right? But when you do so, you also stick your neck out because you're doing something you can be criticized for. And whenever you're doing that, then there's a risk of being shamed. And that's essentially just not being accepted into a group, not feeling safe in, in a social constellation, in a community. And once again, we're kind of wired to do that. So it's a bit strange winding up in a scenario like that. So I think that is a big part of, of the safety, feeling safe enough to actually do something that other people might not agree with. Hmm. Yeah. And if we if we talk a little bit about what's actually going on in the body, like why are some people unable to may feel? I mean, everyone can make a decision, and everyone makes decision every day, like millions of decisions all the time. But when it comes to certain decisions, they constantly look for um, advice on the outside, and also there's this. Uh, even if they have an answer that they feel comfortable with, they still go to a new point of view or this feels good but i still need the, the, there, because there's so much information out there that they they keep on looking for something that oh maybe this maybe that i have to know more about this like never ever reaching a conclusion and like anchoring into a decision in the body so what is actually going on because this is something physiological going on it's not that the pe person is like you can't say like I'm bad at making decisions. That's not. It's not a skill. You know. It's like it's not. It's not something that you can learn in in that sense. It's it's something in the body that is going on that affects our ability to to make the decisions. What would you say, Simba, is, is happening in the body? Well, there's a lot of stress, right? That's the first aspect, and you can look at it on so many different levels. You can look at it psychological, you can look at it in the nervous system, what happens. I think most people are familiar with the psychological component. If you have not trusted your word, if you haven't fulfilled what you set up to do, if you haven't, like, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. and do exercise every morning, and I know I'm maybe not going to do that, like I do, but if I'm a person that doesn't do that, and I failed my own word, repeatedly right and my brain is already primed that I'm, I'm not trusting my own word right it goes from your conscious to your subconscious it goes into your nervous system that your nervous system doesn't trust it it doesn't feel mm -hmm. safe with it right it feels unsafe to do something trusting yourself because i haven't trusted myself so it feels safer to do something else to do something that's not in in congruence with this new plan and that kind of leads us into all of this self-sabotage and, and, and all of these different behaviors that people uh, talk a lot about that they have. Oh, I have no discipline. I'm lazy. I have all of these things. And it really has nothing to do with that. It has to do with a lack of safety on the nervous system level. Your nervous system is not feeling safe enough maybe to expose itself because it's afraid of getting shamed from someone else. Or I failed so many times it feels uncomfortable to even think about it or I don't know success having a lot of money meant that someone in the past was uh, like um, they, they got problem for it right like someone's trying to rob them or someone's coming after them or it was a danger it put like a target on their back if they had a lot of money so now when I think about having a lot of money part of me wants to do it but a subconscious part remembers why wait a minute, this person got all this money. That wasn't safe. They had all of these things going on. So we can have a lot of these parallel stories. So what he does, he really creates a stress on the inside of the body. And we're usually not aware of it. Like me sitting here thinking, listening and such, because it has happened so many times. So it's beyond your conscious control, unless you relax your body to the point we actually start to see when that happens. But you need to be quite grounded and guided to do that. And if you're not in that place, it will be very hard to notice your body going into one of these cycles of self-sabotage or procrastination or self-doubt or whatever it is. 
but it really comes down to a protective mechanism because it doesn't feel safe to go into this new endeavor. It's actually very funny because I um, I, I was uh, doing um, a course on uh, money frequency and uh, uh, a while back, and she said that to raise your money frequency, you need to be a person where you say something and you do and you fulfill it after because it, you're priming your nervous system uh, to be grounded to be so that the that there's a correlation between if you if you fulfill everything that you say or if you're someone who uh, doesn't do that and that that has a straight correlation to to um, to raising your uh, abundance that was it's just a side note i, I felt like <laughs> i wanted to share amazing mark yeah i think what timba said um about the safety um but if, if we tie safety into the um you know the, the theory of the polyvagal curve you know from from being grounded to being ungrounded in the blue zone uh, the blue zone is an area where you are unsure. And so if you're unsure, then you're not able to easily make decisions. And so one coping mechanism with that might be, well, I'm going to go and ask other people and that might be able to help me. So from a, from a purely nervous system perspective, that person, you know, uh, you know, with, without judgments is just, you know, acting from the state of their nervous system yeah. and most likely without even realizing it. Like, like you said, Simba, too, some of these things we don't even really understand how it's affecting us. Safety is a huge factor in that. So once someone is able to regulate and ground a little bit more, then they might realize like, oh, these questions I've been asking, well, I know them all along or I have a new sense of awareness so that I can make those decisions for myself. And so here at Living with the Spirit, when we teach people about the polyvagal curve and moving from the blue to the green zone, there's a lot of self-discovery that happens within that. And so if we encounter someone who has this problem, like always asking other people, we can't just kind of like give them the answer. We can't just say, oh, well, you just should do X, Y, and Z. What they have to do is they have to learn it for themselves. And the only way they, they can learn it is, like you said, Sarah, is through the body. And so we teach them through a variety of practices how to ground, how to come down the curve and deactivate so that they can feel embodied in their selves, which means that ultimately their ability to decide things will sl slowly start to manifest for themselves. Yeah, I would say that uh, the inability, to, I mean, the, the body is like an instrument that we will have every single decision that will ever be thrown upon us we will have the answer in the body because the body will always communicate to us what is right and what is wrong and um, that's when you know a lot of people talk about full body yes full body no like you know when your decision is like anchored in truth because the body tells you it's not some it's not someone else who tells you it's if it, we're going to go this direction or that direction it's the body that tells you that and if we are unable to make that decision it's because we're disconnected from the body we cannot feel Either we cannot feel or we cannot interpret it, interpret the, the signals that is coming from the body. And that makes us feel very unsure and, as Simba said, unsafe. Yeah. So it's a nervous system. Like if we are disconnected to the body is because we don't feel that as it's safe to be in the body. So it's the nervous system and the safety that kind of pushes up into the mind. You said like the, the blue zone, the mind zone, where we constantly try to think our way into a solution and i mean the the mind cannot solve that kind of problem because that's not what it's designed to do and uh, the knowing and the intuition and the guidance needs to come from a, a, a deeply rooted connection in the body so if that is and that's what we see with so 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 many people that the the that, that's what one of the major issues i would say is the disconnect from the body and the inability to to feel and be guided by the body. So that's what we do. We we bring people down to the body, and uh, I mean, you have multiple benefits of bring, being in the body. Making a decision is only one of them. Right. 
Yeah, kind of two words comes to me. A like agency that you're able to take agency and and mm. stand up for yourself. But leadership also comes to me, and that might sound a little bit strange, but that you can lead yourself, or you can be a leader in your own life, or in your relationship, or or in your business, or whatever it is. But if you're not coming from a place of safety, neurologically your body knows it, right? Sure, you can fake it until you make it you can start to do something until it feels natural right like you start to do something that doesn't feel natural until it feels natural uh, but there might be a lot of conflicts and suppression so i i really don't recommend that uh, method unless you actually really don't know what you're doing but when it comes to leadership it's the same if i were to ask her answer this question and i'm quivering in my voice and i'm like oh, i'm not really sure and all of a sudden, no one's going to listen. No one's going to care about it. If you do that yourself, your nervous system knows, hmm, <laughs> this makes no sense. You know, we're, we're wired like that. It makes no sense to listen to this. I don't even believe it myself. Who else is going to believe it? But when you really come from agency and it comes from within, not just from your mind, but somewhere deep inside of you, I just know it's a pull. I don't think about it. This will be a good idea. It's a magnetic pull. I'm pulled towards this direction. Then when you're speaking from that place, you're naturally gravitating towards everything you want, right? And then you will really know what is it that I want. Your body will say yes, a full body yes, or a full body no. Okay, this is my purpose. This is what I'm pulled towards. This is what I'm here to do. Is this aligned with this or not? But if you don't really have a purpose, if you don't really know yourself, I'm going to be in this swayed position where anyone else can tell me something. And if they're just certain enough, I will believe it because they sound very certain. And that's the safety my nervous system is looking for. But it might be a not so good answer for me. But they just seem very secure and confident in what they say. And my nervous system feels that co-regulation. I might just do it, however crazy the idea might be. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you touched upon another aspect also, Simba, the fact that we, so the, there might be this disconnect from the body that we are unable to know what's right and what's wrong for, for me. Uh, but it can also be this inability to to speak your truth, to be to feel safe enough to share what you actually think. Um, and you talked about shame and stuff, because... You know, it's this fear that we are like it's like we have this mask on and we're 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 so primed to follow the line, you know, like follow everyone else and do like everyone else is doing, that that there's like a collective right or wrong. And as you said, like if I fail here, then I will feel ashamed, I will feel bad about myself or stuff like that. And that's a that's a huge thing. I mean, I used to be like that. I I was I was very afraid of speaking my opinion um, freely because of not knowing how that would be reciprocated and if like if I was going to stand out, if I'm going to be this or that, and that kept me from making some decisions. Uh, and it wasn't really because I didn't have a, a connection with the body. But it was more about just looking at the outside for validation constantly. And, and now since I started this journey, since I moved to Thailand seven years ago and started on my own journey, then I understand that because I always worked with leadership and I loved leadership. And I was like, my dream was to become a leader and, and all of that. But I didn't I didn't make the, the, the connection that leaders lead. They don't really follow anyone else they don't look for the outside for validation in that sense and that's what I felt with my leadership is that I'm so rooted in my own decision in my body but also I like if I start to look for validation from the outside I'm not leading I'm following then that's not what I'm doing so it's this I had to break free from, from the illusion of what everyone else is thinking and actually become my own conscious leader and 
step into my own like sovereign being and and trust whatever is my path and uh and then things really started to shift for me and, and things started to become very interesting in life. Anyone else has that same, any, any, any reflections? Yeah. For, for me, Sarah, that, uh, that, that, that makes a lot of sense, but um, for, for my personal journey, um, I, I had that same feeling, you know, where like I, um, I wanted to make the decisions myself and, and follow my own heart to my own intuition but uh, I, I was like that, uh, that mango tree that, that ripened too early. And so unfortunately, when I made those decisions, I was completely full of shit. Mm. You know, I was, just, I was just flying by the seat of my pants and <laughs> making decisions and pretending like I had the authority, pretending like I knew what I was doing. I mean, with full certainty, too. You know, like I, was, I would look you right in the eye and say, yes, let's do that. Or I would, you know, lead, lead people. But what I didn't have was the the um the vitality i didn't have the honesty i didn't have the purity to actually follow through with those things that i said that i was going to do so uh it was like this cart before the horse situation and so now that i've matured and you know i i i'm not you know completely leading myself driven by my ego then uh those when i do make those decisions and i do follow through it comes from the heart and not from you know some wild thought that i had or from the ego mm very early on in my so I, I, I it's like from when I moved here that was like my new life and the old one was the one I left behind so very early on my on this journey uh, I decided to not make any decisions based out of fear mm. and to not even though I felt fear I decided I made a promise with myself that I was going to follow through on on the decision even though I would be very fearful so um and i mean i've been making decisions when i've been like burning of fear like i i i felt it just crazy fear and the thing is that with that promise that i made in those moments when i'm burning with fear and I'm feeling, oh, maybe, maybe let's not make that decision. Maybe not go with what I really want or believe in. Maybe I go with the fear. And then my whole body, even though I'm like on fire with fear, my whole body says, no, we're not, we're not giving away mm -hmm. to the fear. Yeah. And then I go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is so scary. But I just know in my heart. I can't do that anymore. It's not, it's not even an option that is available for me anymore. And that, yeah. so that decision that I made was so, so, so deep. And it's so interesting how my life has shifted since I made that promise and how I started to navigate my life because now I operate with a deep sense of trust that anything that happens to me based on, if I make a choice from the heart, then anything that happens from that point is supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. And whatever I'm being put through is what I'm supposed to learn. So then the fear kind of just, it might not go away 100%, but it loses most of its power. Yeah. That's I think definitely understanding that I... safety is a big yeah. part of it. <laughs> Were you saying something, Mark? I was just going to say that uh, that Sarah's example has been, you know, uh, inspiration to me also to to not be held back by fear. That's it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And like we we talk a lot about these different theories and and all of this because we live it every day, so it's very obvious to us. But really, you know, what brings you out of a safe place? First and foremost, are you in a safe place? I mean, we don't know, right? You don't know until you know. Maybe you weren't brought up in a safe place. So if you just look at it, when you're born, there are certain affects that you have, right? That are like imprints. I wouldn't call them emotions. I would call them affects because no one has taught you them. They're there biologically, right? You can laugh. You can smile. A newborn baby can see in your eyes if you're generally smiling or if you're doing this or you're using these muscles. 
So your facial cues will tell you a lot about the emotions you have. And when you're a newborn or when you're young, you cannot co you, you cannot self-regulate because you're not developed to do that. Your self-regulation or your co-regulation, the way you feel safety and trust and, and comfort is by physical touch, calm voice from your mother or your father, someone gives you food, someone is there, you feel the warmth. If you had traumas, maybe you didn't grow up with a parent that wasn't present, have your life look like, maybe you never had safety. So you don't even know what safety is. Then that can lead to two ways. Either I don't trust anyone, I just go my own way fully, or I don't trust myself and I trust everyone but myself because mm -hmm. I'm looking for that that I didn't have, right? Mm -hmm. But really when it comes to the question of safety, I kind of look at it, this is my personal view. I wouldn't say this is I, I read anywhere. Uh, when you're talking about fear, I'm talking about fear for physical death of my body or someone else's body that I care for, right? So that's that's like the physical death fear. When I'm talking about shame, it's about losing face. It's the ego identity because you don't really have a fear of losing the ego identity because if you, it always has to do with in a... Um, combination with other people in relationship to other people if you do a public speak and you mess up and no one's there you don't care you have to have someone else there right to lose face yeah. so losing ego identity really has to do with losing face or the fear of being shamed because you did something that doesn't make you feel that you belong in a group or you're pushed out of the group and i think a lot of us have had experiences like that and society is very Different cultures, religion is very really tightly knit to yeah. the point where it's hard to do something else besides the culture, to the point where you don't trust yourself. Maybe you grew up with someone that was very dominant and you were learned to, you know, you shouldn't draw, you shouldn't paint, you shouldn't sing, you shouldn't dance, you shouldn't do this, you should and, and you hear that year after year after year, and you just don't know what's what anymore, right? So I think there's many factors to why someone doesn't listen to them, but it really comes down to that safety and you know, understanding safety is not that I tell you to, oh, you're safe. There's no one else in the room. Safety has to do with what is perceived in your nervous system. And those are two different things, being safe and feeling safe. So once you start to really understand what safety is on the nervous system level, that's when you start to listen from the core, like you said, Sarah, and, and really start to talk from there. And then, sure, there might be fear, there might be regrets, but you know you're on a path, and I'm here to learn. And I can't mm -hmm. see the way forward, but I trust, because I know this this will always bring me to what I need to do, what I need to learn, what I need to go through. Yeah. So what would you say is the... So would you say that you could work through this This if, if someone has the inability to uh, to make choices, if you keep asking advice from from other people and being stuck in that external validation would you say that it's possible to work through it's possible uh you need guidance and someone to coach you through but it's possible you can change anything exactly you yeah. can change anything yeah there is nothing that's irreversible i mean unless you're dead right that's that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's i can't do that we can't <laughs> we can't uh unmake that decision no no yeah. You're gone, you're gone. Yeah. So, what, but Mark, what would you say? How is the deep work, the deep inner work uh, correlated with these kinds of issues, these kind of social social navigation issues? What would you say? Yeah, um, I think that uh, there's a certain aspect of this um, where you're asking other people that also comes from um, the mindset of, of comparison. And so when you go and ask someone else for advice, you may not actually be looking for th their advice, but you just want to compare, like, is my thinking similar to their thinking? And uh, I, can't, I can't take a lot of credit for that idea because I was actually just reading from the self-love uh, book, our, our beautiful friend, Sarah Kira, uh, on, on the topic of comparison. And I just kind of like, hey, we're actually just talking about that right now. Um, so so maybe I'm just going like, to read like two, two sentences from this. Yep. When, when you are constantly in a place of comparison, you are never really satisfied. This creates a lot of tension for yourself and for the people around you. And when, and when, and when she says tension there, 
we can relate it right back to bodily tension, right back to the nervous system. Yeah. So being, being connected inside of your body is such a valuable tool for so many different problems in your life. Yeah. And so becoming fully embodied, connected to your body, letting go of tension, letting go of stored emotional traps that are inside of the, you know, tissue of your body. I think this is where, where the real work is. So yeah. when you say, Sarah, you know, what can you do with the, the deep inner work? The deep inner work could start with something as easy as body work, as yeah. you know, committing to lymph massage every single day or doing yoga or stretching the body in new ways that you haven't done before. And this is going to bring you back into your body, out of the blue zone, into the green zone, which will allow you to access your personal truth. It's a slow process. It could be a fast process, depending on your, your drive and, and, and where you are. But like Simba said, it's definitely possible. We can, we can work on this problem just like we can with many others. Yeah, so the, the coming back to the, the physical connection, like this, doing the somatic work, really, uh, is one thing. And then starting to live by your truth is another one. So usually when we, uh, when we work together with people, uh, you guys do more of the somatic work to get people into the body. And then I help them to navigate how to live by your truth and help them to navigate. Okay, so I'm, I'm back here in my body and I'm starting to make decisions and it feels really scary. And then what? Because then maybe you feel confident in your own decision, but you start to change your behavior on the in, in the in the social life, and then people start to have opinions about you changing. And then the person comes back and say, So now what? Now I have another problem. <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, you need to to um that's also one thing that's hold us back also because when we're stuck stuck in the loop, people have expectations on our behavior and how we're gonna navigate and what we're gonna do and all of that. So it's not super easy to 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 you know, here I am, the new self, and then present that to the world and that can be super scary and a bit tricky. So yeah. it's about finding your way and navigating that. And that's what we that's a lot of the work that we do here that bringing back to the body, but also creating the new kind of life, the new lifestyle, the new, yeah, the holistic lifestyle redesign kind of idea that you can completely transform yourself. And then when you transform on the inside, the outside will automatically transform. And it's about the, the frequency that you talked about in the beginning that the, the inner frequency will match the outer frequency. So when you raise your inner frequency, which you do when you do the somatic work, because you start to connect to whatever is on the inside, then the, so it's about the, the internal transformation and the external transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that's what we do. Also, I mean, it has to do with getting to know yourself. Mm because if you're not acting from who you truly are mm. which we might not do due to trauma and society cultural religious conditionings and belief systems mm. i don't really know myself right and then i don't really get to know anyone else either because i'm not coming from myself so i don't know myself i don't know anyone else and that might sound strange when you just look at listen at it like a cognitive but if you look at it from the nervous system perspective then I feel unsafe with other people. Other people feel unsafe with me. Yeah. So now we're walking around and no one is really themselves and no one is feeling safe with each other. And then we start to wonder why we're we feeling so much stress and anxiety. Well, you can't trust anything <laughs> because nothing is authentic and genuine and straight. I'm afraid to say this because of that. And be, I'm not saying you should be blunt or, or, you know, harsh towards someone, but, just to be honest, if you have an opinion, to be able to say that. If someone else has a problem with that, maybe they have some work to do, right? Or maybe you are in the wrong environment if you cannot voice your opinions, if you cannot say what you think. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not in an environment that's not conducive to who you are as a person. That doesn't mean that you're wrong or they're wrong. It might just mean time to do something else, time to move to a new environment. And I think that's also a lot of the work. When you start to do this inner work, you realize maybe the environment I'm in is not conducive to this person I'm really feeling I'm connecting to on the inside. 
and then that's that's up to you to make a choice, right? You can't blame everyone else because of that, but the environment can't blame you for not being like them. You just have to make a choice from there. You know, what do I want to do? Do I want to stay and, and quiet myself down? Mm. Or do I want to go somewhere else and explore? Yeah. Yeah, so if you find yourself in a position where you resonate with what we say and you feel like, yeah, this is me, I'm not able to make the decisions, I don't feel like I'm anchored into my own truth, I don't feel like I can express that or, you know, that you constantly look for more information before you can make a decision or, you know, it's like finally come to the decision and then you turn it up over again because it didn't feel safe. Yeah, there's tons of things that you can do about that. And and returning to the body and doing the somatic work and doing the inner work is is that road. And if you resonate with us and, and feel like we have something <laughs> clever to say and feel like, yeah, this resonates, um, there's two ways that you can work with us. You could either come to our amazing farm in northern Thailand in outside of Chiang Mai, and you can do a deep dive into your situation and uh, this whole place is designed for grounding the ner- doing the nervous system work is uh, our primary um focus we always it's it's only one thing that we do uh, only one of the things that we do but it's the we we never operate without the nervous system in in the in like the front seat yeah. because with the nervous system work that's the that's the biggest gateway to activate all this body self healing mechanisms and it's so deeply rooted to all of our behaviors because all our automatic responses comes from the nervous system so this whole place is nervous system designed and when we start to work with the nervous system things start to come to the surface so it's this physical emotional spiritual detoxification you get to really look at who am i what the heck am i doing and you get full frontal support and like profound guidance to um to help you navigate towards your own freedom and living with your purpose and being able to stand rooted and solid in yourself that's that's uh that's our what we love doing helping people to unravel and just blossom and uh yeah if it's uh if it's uh not traveling that it's on your agenda and you want to work from home and uh, you can join our holistic lifestyle redesign mentorship program which is a six month program where we do the somatic work and we also implement and integrate it into your lifestyle and um, you can start to upgrade both internally and externally at the same time all through the online world which we are having extremely um, beautiful um results with you can check out all our testimonials about that and uh, you can read more about us at livingwiththespirit.com and always feel free to reach out to us doing the deep inner work is uh <laughs> if you need to talk to us about your decision we're happy to <laughs> we're happy to navigate but the thing is that is very interesting actually when we do the consultations we don't tell people what to do we help them to navigate what's right for them. So when you jump on a call with us, it's not a sales call. It's impossible because this product is, you can't sell it because if we push someone into a decision about doing this work, it's not going to end well. So we always try to guide you to what your best decision is. And if that's with us, then then you come to the right place. If not, then that's completely fine and we just want you to our mission in the world is to um, help people find a new way of living and being and uh, to help to create the new earth and if that's with us then it's with us if that's with someone else then it's with someone else because we all all work towards the same goal so thank you for today any final words mark or simba yeah, I think you summed it up nicely um, that, uh, you know, we always also welcome people right here to the farm for that very deeply personal experience that uh, you're not going to get anywhere else. Yeah. It works. 
<laughs> right we're doing the work itself ourselves yeah. and we're doing it with others so we're not trying to sell anything we want to share what works for us because we're yeah. still you know looking for our own healing to some degree but maybe not as much as the people that come to us so we live and breathe this and it does work that's why we're so passionate about it all right have a wonderful weekend everyone and see you next time cheers y'all lots of love bye